yeah. Hey there, how's it going? So this is a uh, uh, part number two to that video. Uh, I don't know if I'm actually going to continue doing this or not. I did tell you that I needed to use the restroom. I do think it's kind of cool that I was able to stop there and then continue this flow kind of quickly, kind of easily. It apparently it stops at like 33.22 or 33.23. I can't really tell exactly when the recording stopped. We'll find out when I upload it to YouTube. Last time it was at 33.22. And uh, I think that's awesome, man. Two master numbers in a row. I mean, how sweet is that? That makes me pretty happy, huh? Maybe there's a, a specific reason. Maybe people don't really have the, the time or patience to, to watch more than a 33-minute video of some random guy inside of his van giving all kinds of amazing uh, energy teachings that they maybe not understand. But that's all right. That's not a big deal. Because there are people out there that do understand. And if you don't understand, that's okay. I mean, you could do your best to understand or you could not do your best to understand. You just... Follow your heart and your flow and whatever you feel. If you feel like this is too much, then go on. You, Not a big deal. No obligation here. If you feel like this is uh, not enough, then awesome, man. Fucking shit. If you feel like it's not enough, let me know. I'll do my very best to make some more for you. I mean, shoot. The more anybody encourages me, the more I'm going to feel pumped up about doing this and see that it's a benefit. And that's awesome, man. I, all I wish to do is do things that benefit. I'm not trying to waste my time, your time, or anybody's time. I don't believe this is a waste of time because this is actually helping me out a lot. I mean, it may not seem like it is, but of course it is. You may think that it is because I like to be seen and all this ego stuff, but actually I'm extremely afraid to do these kinds of things typically. And um, so here I am bravely being myself in front of everybody, very vulnerable. You know, it's like, hey, I'm not planning anything. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just allowing this to happen. So that's a pretty fun thing. And so for, you know, any kind of human ego identity in any kind of way, shape, or form, it could seem like very daunting. Like, oh, I never wanted to be a public speaker. I used to have stage fright. I have all these different things going on. How, how is this possible? I wouldn't even dance by myself. I thought somebody might look through the window and see me, and then I would be embarrassed. But hey, I mean, if you come and look through my damn window and see me dancing by myself in my house, shouldn't I be upset with you? Why would I feel embarrassed? I'd be like, Oh, I'm so sorry, you caught me dancing. Uh, no, wait a minute. Why are you staring in my window right now? That's kind of creepy. <laughs> of course, nobody ever did that. It was just a really ridiculous fear and insecurity and social anxiety that didn't allow me to ever be fully me. Wow, how crazy was that? And then I finally danced in front of people. It was so freeing, so amazing. Ah, and then I started singing in front of people. I got naked on the beach in front of people. I did all kinds of things in front of people. I played my flute in a dirty corner wearing one outfit for, geez, it seemed like a year that one outfit. I had holes in it, looked like crap, had a backpack. I was a homeless guy. Everybody looking down on me, judging me, acting like... I wasn't a freaking awesome dude, but here I was, surrendered to the liberation of all beings the entire time. Nobody could see that stuff. Why? Because I was quiet? Because I had social anxiety? Because I have insecurities? Wow. You know, you'd think that one of these stronger people than me would have come to help me out. But you know what? They never did. But in that way, they also did. Because they didn't help me out, I was able to become self-sustainable. So thank you very much. Because y'all did help me out. I thought that you didn't, but the entire time you showed me the greatest of love that I ever could have been shown. Because... I wasn't able to attach to any of you for validation or affirmation or any of these things. I was ha I had to rely on me. And because I have done that, I now stand firmly as a strong tree, self-sustainably, and now I can also help other things be strong trees and stand on their own as well, not have to have any kind of push or pull from any kind of ego identity, from anybody trying to control or manipulate with any items or any things or any friendships or any loves or any of these fake ideas that people are tethering themselves to other people in a grasping attachment like manner you know and so i'm whew, so lucky oh my teachers wouldn't teach me that means consciousness had to teach me i had to teach me and guess what man they didn't have the teachings that i've received so here i am mm, standing firmly in these amazing pure teachings that have been brought to me by the pureness of consciousness through my direct experience and man, these teachers, they would have had me doing repetitive actions for years and years and years, telling me it was going to take me this many lifetimes, this many this, and this many that, and this much money. <laughs> but no, man, it doesn't take all that. And you know, all of this is uh, not a secret. It's free. It's for us. It is the truth. It's not hidden away. It's right here in front of us every day. And of course it's for us. I mean, what do you mean? It is us. Nothing's trying to keep this from us. We just can't see it until we clear the mirror. 
of consciousness in front of us. So go ahead and polish that thing up by releasing your judgment, coming to forgiveness for all beings, coming to gratitude for all beings, and really, the essence of these things and these teachings are unconditional love for all beings everywhere without one exception. It seems very simple, seems kind of frou-frou or, or hippy-dippy or something, but this is an actual frequency that is an actual uh, vibration and energy within the realm of all of consciousness, within the realm of reality. We can actually measure this frequency. And well... We could measure this frequency if we had a greater technology, when we may be able to bring upon ourselves a greater technology, but I really don't really care about, you know, creating physical technologies uh, with uh, the different ways that we've come, even though it is pretty cool. I mean, I'm not saying that we couldn't do that. I mean, sure, that's awesome, but we happen to be ourselves the greatest technology, the most phenomenal instrument the consciousness has ever created. And so we might as well just wake into that identity, into that being, into that kind of amazing awareness, and then we'll be able to know these things completely and entirely. So, yeah, 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 go make a machine, take 20 years to do that, to, to try to figure out where the very tightest and fastest frequency is in the center of the toroidal field, inside of the heart space right here, you know, the one that you can measure up to 30 feet away from the body, they say, you know, and the very center of that, that's unconditional love for all beings everywhere without one exception, where both of the tornadoes meet and spin together in this amazing space that's like no space, that's what I'm talking about. And it's closest related in the English language to unconditional love for all beings everywhere without one exception. It allows all things, all things allow it. It sees everything, it sees the entire bandwidth, kind of like Roy G. Bibb. Okay, so Roy G. Bibb being the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Now, if you're on the red section, you can't really see the violet section very well. If you're in the violet section, it's kind of a little harder to see the red section. It's like light. Okay, so you got black, but there's still the whole spectrum from black to white. But when you're focused on black, you see more of the black part and just a little bit of the white part. Same thing with white over here. You see a more of the white part and just a little bit of the black part. Same thing with Roy G. Bibb. Over here, red, you see more of the red and then you see, you know, a little bit, you know, of the others. And then over here in violet, you see more of the violet and a little bit more of the rest. Now, and a little bit of the rest. Now, the green, though, the very center part of that, you get to see the entire bandwidth very equally, very beautifully in all the directions. Now, I'm, I'm doing this in a very linear fashion, but I, I, I like to say, you know, they say, you know, the Buddha's of the ten directions or these many directions or however many directions, I don't know. I'm thinking of things from my level of experience and thinking of things and very multidimensionally and many, 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 many and just, wow, billions of directions, you know, just as they're extremely hypersensitive. It's like, here's a direction, here's a direction, here's a direction, here's a direction. All of those were directions, you know, it's like, whoa, anyway, angles of focus. You know, it's pretty crazy stuff. All right, so let's see. Now, where are we at? Hmm. <sighs> Ow. All right. So this was pretty cool. I don't know if I really lost my place, or I didn't really quite know where I was going there. That was the end of that. It could have been the end of that. Yeah, good stuff. All right, obviously. I mean, where are we going to go from here? It's not like we're ever deciding anything. We're just allowing these things to move on through. Limitless expression, limitless being, continued phenomenal perfection and purpose. Oh, yes, phenomenal, great, gorgeous, and grand. Well, you know, one of the things we have to do is seek ye first the kingdom. If you don't seek the kingdom first, which is, you know, your heart space, the amazing center of the toroidal field. Oh, we got back on track. Amazing center of the toroidal field. I mean, what are you going to do? So that heart space, unconditional love for all beings everywhere, being the master key to the universe, it allows all things, all things allow it. We come into alignment with this frequency, we come into alignment with the heart, and to come into alignment with the heart is to be allowed into the chambers of the heart and to be able to see very clearly all these things coming through. So opening up the instrument that is us, and we're amazing. I mean, we're phenomenal tuners, we're phenomenal superconductors. We can move universal energies and energies for everything, uh, from low to high. Everything has to move through the center point, the bridge point, which is ourselves. And so... When we're doing this, we're constantly like going through all kinds of different emotions, feelings, emotions. It's amazing. When you feel sad, you think that you feel sad just for you, but you're feeling sad for a great many things. When you feel uh, mad, you're feeling mad for a great many things. And if you're able to open up your expression and feel these things purely, they'll just poof, 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 shoot right through you for you know, in a very fast fashion and help everything else around you. And if you're not judging these frequencies, then you're going to have a great time expressing them.
That's right. I mean, why not? <laughs> It'll be a lot of fun. It maybe even just seem like a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, who knows? Anyways, so we were talking previously in part one of this video about the male and the female. Amazing stuff. You know, I really like it because I have this amazing image here, which is a uh, very female style. Oh man, I want to put myself center on that because that's such a great image. I just love that. That's so pretty. Oh man, I'm a pretty boy. Anyways, and then we have this here. Allison Gray, I don't know if you can see it extremely well. It's a lot darker color, so this is a lot more male of an image. So I'm like pretty happy that we have this amazing blessing. Oh man, this reminds me of Tibetan Buddhism. I gotta tell you, man, Tibetan Buddhism, some of the purest wisdom I ever saw. Om Mani Padme Hum. Amazing, the jewel is in the lotus. The lotus is your heart and the jewel is enlightenment. I can't say this enough. All right. So how do we find where we're going? Well, setting of intention, giving permission to write our past for the benefit of all beings, and returning to a place of selflessness and giving ourselves completely. Now, that is an amazing thing. If we could do that, then we'll reap what we sow, and we'll, re we'll be returned to ourselves in a certain manner. Now, knowing that, it may negate the possibility of doing that, because you may do that in order to do that. So go ahead and just set intention to completely overwrite your ego if you ever find yourself in a place like this. Now, I did this through medicine ceremony, through going to our medicine teachers, these, these amazing phenomena reflections of the purest frequencies within us that are gateways to help us through in really amazing fashions. I mean, I could have done through, you know, years and years and years of meditation, and uh, that would have got me, you know, somewhere, of course, but instead I went a much faster route. It was kind of a dangerous route, so I'm not saying that I would uh, recommend it, but it was also not a dangerous route, because I was carried the whole time by perfection, so anything that I saw and everything that I go to, you know, it was amazing, but the thing that I had lucky in my life was this phenomenal amount of dedication, so I was broken away from family, friends, and everything to where there was no avenue of focus for me to have aside from this one. And still, I have no avenue of focus aside from this one still. You know, of course, it's been years now, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough to break, a, you know, years and years of, of a focused habit. <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, but yeah, so it's pretty cool. And any time that I do start to attach to some kind of other story, you know, it's very quickly removed from me. And I'm very quickly shown in perhaps an uncomfortable manner what was going on. Yeah. And that's okay, you know, a wrathful compassion. I really need something to keep me on track, make sure that I'm freaking following the path of enlightenment, make sure I'm everywhere that I need to be. And even in the times that I thought that I'd made mistakes and strayed from the path, but that, that was not astray at all. I learned from those places, they became extreme wisdom, and now I'm able to share them with everybody I meet. So, you know, we're moving through in a really phenomenal fashion, and life is moving me all on its own, so... When I have an intention or a focus or anything, it's all of life and all the motions of every being everywhere that has given me this. It's not really, a, you know, me deciding from the great skill or the things that I've been studying or whatever it is that this is what's happening and this is what I need to do. It's just, it's just the only thoughts and the only focus that's been allotted to me in that particular moment. Now, I have to imagine that's probably the case for everybody else as well. No matter what kind of monkey mind seems to be occurring, this is a monkey mind that's really amazing. Coming into uh, honesty and expression can really help clear those things up. So you ever find yourself feeling scared, afraid, or any of these things, it's very uh, possible that maybe all you need to do is just express that to somebody. Be like, hey man, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm worried about this, I'm, I'm worried about my pal, I don't really know what's going on, this, that, and the other. And if you can find yourself in a rooting of truth, then you can bring yourself around to that truth. And through this expression process, it's possible that you can bring yourself into a great balance with yourself and really understand what the teaching was. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to be able to do this originally on purpose. If, if you know, It depends on your level of mindfulness, your level of awareness. This is something that has come to me recently as a very big possibility, and I've seen through time and time again where this has always been the healing for me, this, this type of expression. Now, sometimes this expression is in music, it's in dance, it's in all kinds of things. When you can't open up your throat flow in this kind of a manner, you can, move, you can move energy with your body, you can move energy with your breath, you can move your energy with anything. Now, I would recommend connecting to the breath originally and then following the breath. That's an amazing cycle or bandwidth to be able to follow and master. And if you can follow it from the beginning to the end of one of your motions through the breath, then you can start to understand how to follow all the other motions as all of the cycles, all of the scales are the same. The scales of the voice, the scales of the throat, the scales of the, the flute, the scales of the guitar, the scales of every motion, the scales of the body, the scale, all the scales. Uh, mimic the scales of the breath, and none of them are really great unless you're connected with the breath. You know, I mean, I can do it without the breath. It's just kind of weird. It's like an empty feeling. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I can be powerful without the breath. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I've stepped outside of the breath before. That's another teaching, though. That's another practice. I mean, then don't go. Don't try to do that. I mean, or try to. I don't know. I'm not trying to instruct you in any way. So, do what you feel. Follow your heart. 
I mean, I wouldn't attempt to do anything like that. I mean, from a point of like where I'm at to like trying something, forcing something, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to do that. But if you need to do that to see it's not going to work extremely well and to see the difference between that and when you don't, that's awesome. You know, effortlessness is a really amazing thing. And, uh, you know, sometimes I have put in a, a ridiculous amount of effort into something. Like, I had to put effort into effortlessness. That sounds kind of silly, but when you're so used to asserting force, it's going to feel, you know, very difficult to reach a point of utter relaxation, you know? And, or at least, for me, it did. So I don't know how it will work for you. It could be very different. It could be extremely smooth, this passage, or it could be shaky or whatever. I'm hoping that the way that my path has gone, it will actually help other beings uh, more smoothly be able to transfer into the awareness of their being. I'm not sure that you actually have to do what I've done because I've done what I've done for the whole of us because we are one. So as one of us does something, you know, it's not, it's the same as if all of us have done it. So hopefully that's the case. And in the fact that I've been marrying myself constantly on all these different levels, it, it could mean that for you it's the same. Of course, it has spoken and in Buddhism and many other things that we have free will and that we'd have to connect to this. And so it may be that every individual have to reach these different uh, progressions on their path. And that's okay. That's wonderful. If you find yourself reaching these different progressions on your path and, um, and you feel as if you need to speak with somebody about something and there's any way that I can relate with you in any way, then that's awesome. Where I am really skilled is knowing the very simple truths. And so no matter what your experience is, whether it's way over here or way over there, or something I've never even heard of because you're creating a reality that's just a completely insane fabrication of your own mind, that's awesome. That's terrific, you know. Come here, let's talk about it, and I'll be able to do whatever I can to show you, point out your ego in any kind of way that can help you perhaps uh, transcend it. Um... And by transcend it, I don't mean like destroy it or get rid of it, but be able to help it, learn it, grow it, understand it. I mean, you can release the original identity that is holding on very strongly to protect itself from life and death, you know. And once you release that in an utter relaxation, allowing the ego to die, which is really a super relax, relaxing thing. It's just like not holding any more tension inside your energy body to allow it to expand further into its true awareness of being. And that's freaking awesome stuff. I've done that. That was cool. And so, anyways, <laughs> I made myself laugh. All right. So, and then eventually you're going to have to embrace the ego. And then when you embrace the ego, it's like telling the ego, hey, I'm not your enemy. I'm not trying to fight you. I'm going to work as a team. I can see that the heart and the mind are one and that we work together and neither of them are wishing to destroy each other. The male and the female are very beautiful. The male, the female, and the heart create the trinity of mind. The two eyes, the pineal gland, the three eyes, the trinity, the heart's eye, the pineal, where the snake comes, the in-between space, up the tree of life, to Adam and Eve, it's amazing, phenomenal stuff, you know, whatever it is, we have all these different stories, and in every one of these stories is the truth, so, in every one, you know, no matter the book you're reading, fiction, nonfiction, whatever it is, there's the truth lying therein, it's amazing. It's a ridiculous perfection. Everybody thinks it's like this hidden thing. You know, they're like, all right, well, you jump through this hoop, and you jump through that hoop, and you jump through that hoop. And maybe you do have to jump through hoops. It really does depend on your karma. Now, you may say, hey, man, that guy was misleading me for this entire time. It's like, well, you know, you know, it's just really a beautiful reflection to release the karmas that you need to release to bring you to the place where you can come into these understandings. And so who knows? Maybe you're very hard. Maybe you're very rigid in certain ways. Maybe you've done things in the past in certain manners, so you now need to repeat pay this energy in a certain manner so that you can come to these places in yourself. I mean, Milarepa was this way. Milarepa is an amazing enlightened being within Buddhism, and he was a phenomenal sorcerer. As it turns out, his mom wanted him to seek re revenge against all of her enemies and all these different things. He did uh, horrible, unseen, heinous acts, and, uh, and eventually, when he was finished doing all these things, he was much older. He's finished uh, working for his mother in this way, something had come to him, I can't remember what it was, somehow some vision, some dream, or some being, and pretty much showed him, you know, what was for him because of the ridiculous karmas, and what was for him was uh, pretty much a hellacious suffering for, you know, for his wrongdoing, his terrible deeds, he did it to himself, he sown his own seeds, when seeing this for himself, he was like, oh my god, like, I have to save myself from this. What am I going to do? How do I? So he sought a llama. He was like, all right, I got to seek a llama. I got to figure out how to, you know, 
reverse this karma, transcend myself, and, and start to actually be a benefit to beings and, and do my best to, to, to right these wrongs. You know, and so he finally he went to a Lama, and this Lama treated him like hell. He did him all kinds of different hard ways, just kicking his karma out, throw, throwing him out of windows, making him make buildings, and tear him down, and make him again, and tear him down, just put him through all this hell. He's like, jeez, what's going on, man? Finally, he gives up. He just doesn't even know what to do. He's like, all right, man, this this Lama's a, a trickster. He's just going to keep screwing me. I guess I really am done. I... I'm really not going to be able to do this. I got to go seek somewhere else, or I don't know. As he's going away, Marpa's wife's like, hey, man, go get your student. Come on, bro. You know, Marpa's his teacher. And he's like, all right, all right. You know he's ready. Go on. And he goes and he gives him his first instruction. And when he gets his first instruction, this is like the huge change in Melaripa's life. And Melaripa turns out to be one of the greatest bodhisattvas, one of the most amazing enlightened masters. And, uh, yeah, and he just gives us these amazing teachings, these phenomenal things. I had an empowerment with Milarepa. He's dancing in front of me. He's clearing my energy. Amazing. How do I love the Bodhisattva, the amazing Buddha of Milarepa. Yeah. Anyways, amazing stuff. Phenomenal. And he actually, uh, upon attaining enlightenment, realized that the track to all beings' uh, enlightenment or their samsaric suffering was going to take so long that he decided to fly into the sky, into the universe, and sing a million songs to the universe to speed the process of enlightenment. How amazingly beautiful was that? So, hey, y'all got any songs to help accelerate our path? Hmm? Got any pure expressions in the moment you want to bring forth from your deep, loving hearts? Yeah, you can love all of yourself, forgive all of yourself, be all of yourself. It's going to take a ridiculous amount of forgiveness. It's going to take an insane amount of compassion. It's going to take a ridiculous unconditionality. I mean, goodness gracious, you have to forgive every living thing, love every living thing, as it is without wishing it to change, and freaking have gratitude for the great wisdom energy that is all of this enlightened action embodied around us, here for us, not against us. To free us from our own suffering that we are causing. There is no other being causing this. We have caused ourselves all of these things. We are one being. There is not one being above us that's done this. But each and every one of us individually and literally. You are the cause of your own suffering. I am the cause of my own suffering. And I am also the cause to my liberation. And you are also the cause to your liberation. And all beings liberation as one being. It's a really phenomenal thing. And so we can release all judgment seeing that we are having this amazing path to enlightenment for the benefit of all beings, for all of us to live in a phenomenal, forever, eternal, golden age of enlightened mind, where we forever reside in the present moment, where we are forever sustained, forever fulfilled, because I can't even tell you how amazingly gorgeous the present is, that you can look at a stick where you can look at a leaf, and it can be the greatest and most phenomenal thing that you've ever seen, and you feel completely fin fulfilled, completely satisfied, as if you need nothing else. And this can be every moment, in every way, always and forever. It's so phenomenal. People are like, we'll become bored. No, 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 no. Boredom doesn't happen. Boredom is a trick of the ego. This is something that happens when we feel like we have to do something. Oh, oh, oh. It's going to be very, 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 very difficult to be bored when you're in your full expression. I mean, goodness gracious, you will have to pretend to be bored, and that won't be very boring, will it? <laughs> yeah, because then it'll be acting, it'll be playing, it'll be having a lot of fun. I had to pick this thing up because my phone is actually about to die. I've been playing this for so long. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty cool, though. We are so close to the end of the of the time here, I wonder if I actually will be able to get these last, what, five, six minutes in, so, without needing to see myself, I'm just going to keep going, I guess, I could even stop, I mean, we have had a phenomenal teaching already, I'm pretty excited about it personally, but I would also kind of like to keep going, I mean, I could probably talk to you guys until the morning, I mean, I could probably talk to you guys till like, tomorrow night. Um, and it's kind of cool that they're in 33 minute sections now that we're doing it this way, because it's like, oh, well, you know, this will, this will be kind of helpful, you know, people will feel like they can go here and here and here, I do part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, and, 
I mean, geez, that's kind of beautiful. I'm just a phenomenal channel of energy. I'm a completely empty being. I emptied myself like four years ago almost, uh, three and a half years ago or so. And so I was moved by the universe, and really all these things is just getting me to realize what was always occurring. So it's not that I really attained anything, I just realized what was always happening. But there is an experience that is really interesting. It does feel a little bit like attainment in some way, because I spun my right into my left. Now that was something that had not happened before. Uh, my right and my left were not spun together and married, until finally I personally did do this uh, myself. I did do this, and uh, it was through releasing a lot of different things, uh, releasing different energies and honoring different energies, finally releasing male gender and um, and Ryan, and having the thought come up, would I still have a penis, and also the thought come up of, you know, would Ryan still be here, or would I disappear, you know, all these different things, and it turns out, yes, I do still have a penis, I am still here, uh, but Ryan, as it was, is not, and... Uh, the, me as a male is not either, you know, I'm actually an androgynous being, I'm both male and female, it doesn't appear that way to you, perhaps, because I have a penis and a male body or form, but don't you worry about that, I've married both of my energies and spun them into a sphere in front of me to tell you for sure, incorrectly, that yes, I am both beings as one, so I'm not even both, I'm simply one. I am the heart. I am the child of the marriage of the male and the female, the coming together of them. They gave birth to what is me, this amazing being of pure, raw, empty energy, pure, raw energy, emptiness, um, and form. A amazingly clear mirror. If you come and stand in front of me, I can help you see yourself very easily, and I can do it in a much more fashion, you know, beautiful fashion than before, fashionable way. That was a mixture of two different things I had to add together in this flow because I got a little uh, confused on where exactly I was, you know what I mean? So I decided just to, to use a disclaimer for impeccability to make sure both uh, frequencies got in just in case they were the coding for anybody that they happened to need to be able to relate with this in a certain particular way that was of a greater harmony. And I'm going to be explaining things like that to remain in the impeccability of my word. And if you perhaps uh, are in a place of understanding to where you can see what I'm doing, then that is a magical and phenomenal thing. And I'm very thankful for you and everything else is too. And we are very thankful for everybody entirely because there's no being greater than the next. We are all extremely equal. And I am only able to be this way because you are the ways that you are. And so through being able to see myself in all these different mirrors around me and all the different forms that the mirrors come to me, it's being able to write me and help me and teach me also many things. So if I see you in anger, if I see you in hate, if I see you in this, if I see you in that, it helps me sharpen my blade. Iron sharpens iron. Uh, two of my brothers are saying that. Also, the teaching of Milarepa, I would like to give credit to my, my, my beautiful brother, Seth McHale. I don't know if he really wants me to say his name, but uh, my beautiful brother, Seth, and... Uh, amazing being, phenomenal bodhisattva. Whether he took his vows in this life or not, I know that he did go into refuge. Uh, he's a bodhisattva, he's an amazing, phenomenal being. We have a Padmasambhava connection, and uh, goodness do I love to bring Tibetan Buddhism into the play. Not a lot of people are uh, Tibetan Buddhist evangelists, that's for sure, but you know, I have a little bit of Christian and uh, Native American uh, study backgrounds inside my journey, so this helps me uh, relate in different ways than maybe what traditionally is possible, and I don't have any uh, set teacher or root guru in that kind of a way to say um, what I am or am not supposed to do, I'm kind of that for myself, consciousness hasn't directed me in any way, one time I had a being come to me in a certain manner, but I've kind of like thrown that off as like a fear mentality thing that was trying to break me from my flow in a certain manner, and, I, and so I can see where, shh, whatever about that, I'm going to say whatever I want, and maybe at that time it was uh, necessary, because I wasn't fully understanding what was going on at that time, I was kind of saying a lot of different things without really knowing, and now I have a greater knowing. And so that's super cool. And I'll observe that too. <laughs> but yes, it is safe to express. It is safe to tell our truth. And it is amazing to be here now. So if you have any time that you have yourself a blockage of energy, any kind of flow of irritation, I would recommend finding somebody to express this to. I mean, you could express it to yourself. And I like to do that myself. But man, when I get to somebody else, and we gather in the nature, we gather in the name, we gather... In the present moment of the now moment together, that is the nature of God, that is the nature of everything right here in this present. When we do this and we're able to speak with ourselves and express with ourselves, it is phenomenally freeing. And even if you're just able to dance with yourself or sing with yourself, any form of expression allows 
energy that is stagnant to be moving in some manner. And this is going to feel very relaxing and uh, very good. So if you're feeling stuck in your body or anything, I recommend moving. Exercise is really great. Dance is whew, some of the greatest of exercises. Tai Chi, Qi Gong, Bagua. I like all of these things. I would recommend maybe finding these things within yourself. It's possible that you already know how to do all of these things on your own completely and uh, that you don't need a teacher. I mean, I never needed a teacher. I don't believe that any of us need a teacher, that we are our own teacher, that our path is our teacher, but sometimes we do go to teachers, and so I don't want to stop you from doing whatever your heart desires. So remember always to follow your flow, follow your heart, despite what anybody says, whether it be me or anybody else, you know what's right for you. Trust your intuition. If you get yourself in a situation to where you have a desire greater than your than your, your wish to, to listen to your intuition, I would recommend to listen to your intuition instead of go for that desire. If you decide not to listen to your intuition, you go for that desire and you find yourself in an uncomfortable situation, um, you could always leave that situation or whatever's going on. Maybe you just get through it. I don't know. Uh, but maybe this will help you in seeing that the next time you're in this kind of a scenario to trust yourself more more thoroughly. Just trust yourself. You know, you know what's right for you. Your heart is guiding you perfectly. And even if you're guided to this kind of a weird situation, that was still a perfection in guidance. It was just showing you something. So please learn from whatever mistake you think that you've made, and then it's no longer a mistake. It is truly a wisdom. This is a phenomenal teaching that another brother of mine had uh, put online, um, Shambhala Mountain uh, Center teachings, or uh, for maybe Shogun Trumpa Rinpoche, or, or um, Gyatso. I don't know. There's all kinds of uh, different amazing teachers always being... Um, being quoted online by this amazing brother, Adam Arthur, and I just really love him a lot. And I just like to always give credit to everybody. It's kind of like a ceremony, a ritualistic thing, to where I'm like always adding their energy and honoring to them, and uh, never just taking a, an amazing honoring for myself, but always sourcing where I get certain informations from, if they come from uh, a source that I'm, I'm knowing of. Okay, uh, something about impeccability of word. And especially if I find myself like afraid to share something, then I'm definitely probably going to share it just to prove to myself that it's okay and I can express myself authentically in every moment without any kind of worry. And also, I explain this to you to show you uh, that no matter where you're at, these things can come up and it's okay. We express them, we move them through, we see them. It's a complete and phenomenal wisdom. Unless we decide to reject it in some way, then we think, oh no, this is wrong. Ah, da, 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 da. But none of it's wrong. There's no particular way, no particular preference. There's no reason to hold on into any kind of uh, spiritual identity or ego. Hold yourself to some kind of form in some kind of a way. Hey, I'm perfect in this way, I'm perfect in that. Well, no, you're perfect just the way you are. No matter how you are it's very natural it's very effortless you're not perfect because you've done this great thing or because you've done this bad thing or whatever it is you're perfect however it is no matter what if you fall if you jump if you if you never fall whatever it is it's gorgeous and it's perfect and it's wonderful and it's for all beings benefit so thank you so much for all of your natural ways and how you have always been for the benefit of all beings i love you and thank you and i believe that this is now the end of part two, <laughs> which I guess will actually